Transactions Management in AX2012 allows you to find information quickly about your customers, document the actions that you take with your customers, and then take further action when the customers are not willing to pay. Let's take a look at some of the features in AX2012. Let's take a look at the aging period definitions form to start. The form has been changed so that you now have color icons that identify the aging periods that a, a transaction belongs to. Now let's take a look at the customer aging snapshot. An aging snapshot represents customer balances at a point in time. These balances then can then be used to facilitate the collections process. You can run an aging snapshot on any aging period definition that you have set up. In addition, you can run them for one company or many companies to, to better enable you to manage centralized payments customers. Once the aging snapshot is complete, then what you can do is you can load the collections list pages and take a look at the collections balances. So let's take a look at a collections list page. The collections list page gives you an age balance for all the customers in your company. At the top you'll notice we have something called collections pools. Collections pools are queries that allow you to segregate your customers ahead of time so that you don't have to do queries inside the list page. For example, this pool is all customers. However, if I wanted to look at simply all customers that are wholesale customers, I can select this, this collections pool and it will filter my customers for me by that query. Now let's take a look at the collections form. Once you have the balances on the screen, you may want to take some action on a certain customer. We're going to take a look at Sunset Wholesales. The collections list page takes you to a collections form. On the collections form you have all the information that you need to help you with the collections process. You'll note we have the customer that we selected and you can actually move on to other customers if you want. You can see the, the purple book. This indicates that we have document management at the customer level, the case level, and we also have it at the transaction and the activities level. On the right hand side of the screen we have the several fact boxes that allow you to see more information about the customer. We have the customer's address, we have their contact information, and this contact represents the default collections contact that you identified on the customer record. We also have their email address, and this icon on the right allows you to actually click on the icon and create an email directly in Outlook. Next we have the aged balances with the icon that re represents those balances and the aged amounts calculated through the snapshot. Below that we have credit information that allows you to keep track of their credit limit and all the open orders and packing slips amounts that have been used in the system. In the middle of the screen we have two areas. We have a transactions grid and an activities grid. The transaction grid shows you all the open transactions that are available uh, for this customer. These are only the open transactions so you may want to also see transactions that have already been settled. To do that you simply select the show button it will give you a list of all the transactions that are available for that customer. In addition, AX2012 has a concept called Enhanced Previews where you can hover over an amount or a field and it will show you information about that field. For example, this gives us settlement information about this invoice. This one gives you voucher information about the same invoice. If we want to get back to where we were, we simply select Open and we get just open transactions. At the bottom of the screen we also have activities. These represent the activities that you have taken to collect against customers. If you select the origin button and say all, you'll also see all activities for that customer no matter what module it comes from. If there is not enough information on the screen and you need to go into details, you can also use some of these menu choices to see additional forms that are connected to the collections management form. You can open the transactions form, the settlement form or the closed transaction editing form. You can also open up the customer form and the activities form. Now that you're able to find the information that you need, it's time to take some action with your customers. Let's say for example that you made a phone call to a customer and you wanted to document that. You can go over to the action menu, select the, an action type, in this case a conference call, enter a purpose, discussed your account, and then enter some notes. We discussed overview, overdue amounts. Once you cl click on the Create Action button, 
the action is added below in the grid and it shows you the information about that activity. So every activity that you take, whether it's an action or a task, an appointment or an event, will be documented in this form. Now let's say after you've talked to the customer, you've decided that one of your invoices is disputed. Let's take a look at the second invoice and let's assume it was disputed. and Let's change the status. We can use the change status action to change the status to, to disputed and then you change the act the reason code to disputed and then automatically create an action that represents this change in dispute, dispute. Notice that an action has been added to the bottom and the status on this line has been changed to disputed. Let's say for example that we also wanted to send a statement to a customer. In this case we can go up to the statement menu. We can create a statement as of today, we can include settled transactions or not, and we can click on OK. What AX2012 is doing is creating an Excel spreadsheet with the customer balances on one tab. On a detailed tab, it lists the customer transactions in their original currency. And on a final tab, it lists those transactions in the customer's currency. And let's create a task that will actually remain open. So we're going to create a task that's a follow-up task. Let's say we want to follow up with the customer. Make follow-up phone call. Call them later. When we create this task, in this case this task is created down in the activities area, but it, it's left open. Now another feature in collections is, is called cases. You may have a lot of transactions, but in reality what you want to do is you want to simply track two or three of those transactions for a specific reason, maybe a dispute. What you can do to create a case is you can highlight transactions and then say assign to case. In this case we're going to say this is a disputed case and assign those to the case. What that does now is it creates a case where we can, and we can go to this inquiry where we can say disputed case and it filters our screen to show only those transactions that were disputed. If we want to get back to where we were before, we simply use the clear filter, and that filter would then show all transactions instead of those assigned to a specific case. Now, it's, it's often happens where a customer might send you a check that bounces, because if they're a collections customer, they often don't pay correctly. So what you can do is, you, if you have a bounce check, you can actually highlight the bounce check, and click the action called NSF payment. What this does is it comes up with a dialog box that says it's going to assess a fee and it wants to know if you want to go ahead and do this. If you click OK, what happens is, is it will give you the cancel payment dialog and will say NSF and it will actually cancel that payment it actually shows us an info log about the, the canceled transaction. Now if you get down to the end and it's just you cannot connect, collect on this customer, sometimes you need to write off their account. So what you can do is you can click on all the transactions and simply say write off. What that does is it gives you a dialog that says what's the date of the write off, what's the reason of the write off, and when you click this write off button it creates a general journal entry for the write off. It does not post it but it simply creates the journal entry. Since it's going to the general journal you can then run it through general ledger workflow get it approved and then post the journal entry. So let's take a look at that journal entry. We'll close this form and we'll go into the general ledger. Look at the general journal. Here's our write-off journal entry, write-off transactions for Sunset Wholesale. When we go to the lines, note that we'll, it will come up and it'll have two entries, one to offset the customer's account and another one to hit the write-off account, bad debt expense. There's also a function where you can also flag it so that it also writes off your sales tax and recaptures it for you. That's all we have for collections management today. I hope the information was helpful to you.